In this lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of epithelial tissue and where they're found. So if you remember from the epithelial tissue video, we classify epithelium based on how many layers there are and the shape of the cells at the top of those layers. So simple means that it has one layer and stratified means that it has two or more layers. So let's look at the different types of epithelium a little bit closer. So first is simple squamous. So it's simple, so it's a single layer. The top layer, which is the only layer, is flat, so we call it squamous. So it looks something like this. Now, as you can tell, because it's such a thin layer, the biggest benefit here is we can kind of control what gets to pass through here. So what we see in simple squamous is benefits of filtration. So this would happen in the capillaries diffusion, which we see uh, through the membranes that line body cavities. And then the last benefit we see a lot with simple squamous is gas exchange, and we see that in the alveoli. So this is that exchange of CO2 and oxygen. Next is simple cuboidal. So simple means single layer. Cuboidal means a cube-like cell. So it's going to look something like this. There's two main places we find this. One is coverings and linings. So this would be coverings like uh, over the lens of the eye or linings of uh, somewhere like the kidney tubules. And then we also see this in the ducts of exocrine glands. So if you check out the lesson on duct on glands, you'll see this shape of epithelium inside of those ducts. Then there's simple columnar. This is a single layer of column-like cells some of these are mucus secreting, like in the stomach, or we could see goblet cells. These are all column-like. So this would be a columnar cell. And then the goblet cell literally looks like a goblet, right? And it has mucus in it, okay? So simple columnar, one layer, column-like cells, and sometimes even goblet cells. You could also see some of these being ciliated, which means they have little hair-like projections. And the purpose of these hair-like projections is to move substances past the cell. So the best example here is what we find in the respiratory tract. And then you could also have um, a columnar cell in this epithelium that has microvilli. And the benefit of microvilli is it increases surface area for absorption. And the most common place we find this is in the small intestine where we're trying to absorb our nutrients. So the next type of epithelial tissue is kind of a specialized type. It's called pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Let's break these words down. We just talked about ciliated, right? We know that means it has the little hair-like projections. And then we know that stratified means many layers, right? But that's where the pseudo part comes in because it's not really stratified, it's fake stratified. And let me show you what that means. So as with all epithelium, it rests on a basement membrane and you'll have these column-like cells. But what happens is some of these cells are a little bit shorter, maybe shaped a little bit funnier than the others. And so you have all of these are one layer because they all rest on the same basement membrane. But what you start to see is that the nuclei, if you look at this under a microscope, you look like you have multiple layers of cells when in fact it's truly only one layer. So this is where the pseudo part comes in. It's fake stratified. It is actually one layer. It just looks like it could be multiple layers. And then of course, remember that it has cilia. So it has those little hair-like projections. Remember it could then it could also have goblet cells. So again, that's just another way where we see sometimes the cells have different levels of those nuclei. So where would we find cells that are ciliated and secrete mucus? Where do we need that? In the respiratory tract. So we can get all that gunk out of our lungs. So the next type of epithelium is actually stratified. It is stratified squamous. So stratified means it has multiple layers and squamous means it has flat cells in the top layer. So here's the thing, you could have multiple layers of cells and they could really be any shape. 
So you might have a layer of cuboidal, layer of columnar, but what we see is the very top layer is flat, and that is how we classify it. So this would be a stratified squamous epithelium. Now, this type of epithelium can be keratinized, which means it contains a protein called keratin, and the purpose of keratin is to help with waterproofing. And we see this in the epidermis of our skin. Just think this is how we the skin is able to not soak up water like a sponge. Or you could have non-keratinized, which doesn't have keratin. And the best example of this would be um, in your mucous membrane. So like the inside of your mouth, the inside of the esophagus, as well as uh, places like the vaginal canal or the anal canal. Now we can also have stratified cuboidal. So we have multiple layers. They could be any size and shape, but we find that the very top layer is cube-like. So multiple layers, stratified, cube-like, cuboidal. This is found in the ducts of sweat glands. And that's about it. These are not very widespread in the body. This is the main place we're going to find stratified cuboidal. Next is stratified columnar. I know you're figuring this out by now. Multiple layers of cells. Top layer is column-like. Stratified columnar. These could be ciliated. So that would be uh, like in the uh, larynx or the voice box. Or they could be non-ciliated, which we find in the urethra. So obviously just depending on where this type of epithelium is located. So as you can see, this is not very widespread either. The last type is called transitional or uroepithelium. It is stratified, which means it has multiple layers, but the top layer actually varies. So let's see, we've got our multiple layers here. Might have a layer of cuboidal, but the top layer actually transitions hence transitional from flat to kind of a globular shape. And so you can't specifically classify it by one thing on the top layer because it's varied. So the other way to remember this is the only place it is found is the urinary tract, which is also why it's called uroepithelium. So transitional because the top layer transitions from flat to globular, uroepithelium because it's only found in the urinary tract. So let's quickly recap what you need to know about each type of epithelial tissue. Make sure that you can picture it and understand the shape of the cells and the layers based on how we classify it. You also want to know the main location. So it might be a body system like the respiratory system or some sort of specialty function or location like a mucous membrane. And then make sure you know the specialized functions. Cilia move substances past the cells. Microvilli help with absorption. Goblet cells secrete mucus. And keratin helps with waterproofing, especially in the skin. All right, so that's it for the types of epithelial tissue. Make sure that you check out the resources and images attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.